<laughs> oh, sorry. We got, excuse me. You can tell we're really good at this stuff, huh? Oh my God. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight for this town hall debate, town hall meeting. Um, let me give you a little outline of what we're going to do with our time here. Um, I'm going to give some short introductory words and uh, let you hear a little bit about the survey results that we asked for a couple weeks ago. Karen's going to fill us in on the financial picture. And then Benji is going to discuss what you all want to hear about is how we're thinking about uh, phasing and reopening of the church. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have a question and answer at the end. Um, thank you for those of you who already sent in questions during the week. That was super helpful. Um, you'll notice there's a little Q&A button at the bottom that you can log in there and just real time type us up, up a question and Karen's going to be moderating some of those questions for us. Um, we're going to try to keep this meeting as kind of concise as possible, but we will also try to get through as many of the questions that we can. So if for some reason we don't get to your questions sufficiently, you want to hear more, uh, just call Benji when the night's over and he'll get to you. Um, but obviously um, things are changing, uh, not only week by week, but, but day by day. Um, so the goal of this town hall meeting is not to provide um, definitive answers about how the coming weeks and months are gonna unfold. Um, wish we had definitive answers, you probably wish we did too, but uh, those are not forthcoming right now. But uh, we do wanna let you in on how we're processing information kinds of things we're thinking and hearing about and just the, the sort of tentative plans that we're beginning to, to think about putting into place. Um, now, as much as we all want to meet together in person again real soon, um, to hug each other, to talk with each other face to face, just put a hand on somebody's back and pray for them. Uh, and trust me, no one wants to do that more than me. I'm rather tired of talking into a little dot on my phone, but um, as much as we want that, our goal now is not simply to get back to the normal that we're comfortable with as quickly as we can, but now, as always, our main goal as a church is to seek to honor uh, our Lord Jesus Christ in all that we do and say and uh, the plans that we're making in every situation and circumstance. Um, we want to make sure that we, we never get so comfortable with uh, normal, uh, that we miss opportunities to grow through challenges, uh, to care for people in, in discomforting situations, and to simply witness to the hope that we have in Christ uh, in the midst of uncertainty and crises. So uh, before we, we go any further, um, let me just tell you, I love being one of your pastors. And over the last several weeks, I've just been so encouraged as I've tried to call many of you and uh, the conversations that I've had to just check in and, and give a uh, word of encouragement when I can. So often I've put down the phone uh, after the phone call and just felt like, man, I got so much more <laughs> encouragement out of that phone call than I probably gave. Um, I've just been so impressed with how you are seeking the Lord in prayer and through the word, trying to care for your neighbors and family members and church uh community and the wider community as well. Um, it's, it's really been inspiring to me. Um, it's also been a good reminder to me that this virus has not stopped the church from being the church. Um, it's halted the ways that we are used to um, going about doing church. Um, but again, we look forward to being able to meet together in person um, at some point before long. But, but I want to remind us but as we begin, being the church um, is much bigger than the forms that we are used to. And so thank you for the ways that you've reminded me of that. Um, can you pause one second? Can you, can you scoot this way? Oops. Well, Just a little, little bit. Sorry. All right. Is that better, everybody? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, six feet right here. Six feet. James is over there in the corner. Um, so um, I in that vein about this, you know, we've had to shuffle and do a lot of different things uh, over the course of these past several weeks. I also want to say at the beginning how proud I am of our staff and their adaptability um, during the season. 
want to say thank you to Kara Lee for the way that she's uh, had a hand in revamping our website to make it uh, more user friendly during this time. And um, thank you for James for putting together all this video content um, for Sundays. You've done a fantastic job with that. For Katie and Claire, who have got us into the 21st century and have a, a Instagram presence now for the church, we're grateful for that. Uh, our children and youth teams have just been putting out remarkable content for our children and their families. And I'd encourage you, even if you don't have uh, kids or youth in those ministries programs, check out what they're doing. It is super impressive, and I think you'll be encouraged as well. Uh, for Erin Patterson, the way she's caring for our home group leaders and, and getting new people into home groups for the next home group series that we just started. Uh, thankful for Joanne and just the incredible pastoring she's doing. Uh, if you don't know, there's 120 women still meeting weekly in their gathering groups, and uh, she's just caring so well for, for many and some in some really difficult circumstances. Uh, for Mario and Deanna and their usual way of just making sure everything is running smoothly around here, and uh, for Karen, who is just an incredible leader, and she is juggling a million details and always making people feel cared for in the midst of that. So thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. um, so let me get to the survey, and this is just going to be a brief overview, but uh, I want to say thank you. We really treasure your feedback, and a lot of you responded to that. Uh, survey. I think we had uh, 244 responses, so give us uh, a good bit of information to go by. Um, so here's briefly what, what we heard from that. Um, number one, we're grateful that generally our people have, have not been physically affected by, by COVID. Um, most indicated that, that they're doing really well in that area. Um, we found out that anxiety levels are a little higher, uh, but the overall indication was that many are feeling um, pretty good about their mental health, actually. Um, in the area of finances and employment, um, I was a bit surprised uh, how well overall people in the church are doing. Now, we realized that this was given, uh, the survey results came back two weeks ago. So, um, you know, things are, again, changing rapidly. And if we were to ask you to do that again, which we probably will send the survey out again and try to track how these things are changing a little bit, um, I'm sure that, that there'll be a little bit more hardship there. And also, just because many people in our church haven't been affected in their employment and finances, we know that, that some have. There are people who have lost their jobs, who've been furloughed, um, business owners who just don't have any business coming in, and uh, we're trying to care well for, for those who are going through really tough circumstances. Um, unsurprisingly, the lowest kind of uh, figures that we saw came in on questions that asked about how connected people feel to their friends and, and family. Um, although even in this area, overall, speaking broadly, folks responded more positively than negatively. Um, the results that related to the content and resources that we're putting out, uh, providing as a church, uh, were mostly positive. We're glad to hear that uh, from many that these seem to be helpful resources and we're also thankful for suggestions and feedback that came in and we just say keep keep them coming if you have uh, suggestions for us in the future of things that would would be more helpful in terms of the content that we're putting out online uh, we'd love to hear from you about that um, there was another section that dealt with needs and resources and many indicated that they they would benefit from prayer and emotional support and I just wanted to put a plug in this past weekend, we tried for the first time offering uh, prayer teams through Zoom and that was not utilized uh, so well, but that would be a great way if you're feeling like you would uh, benefit from being able to talk to somebody about your prayer needs. I encourage you this next few weeks, we're gonna, we're gonna try this again and uh, that'd be a great way. We're just bringing people into that prayer, prayer room and partnering up, them up with somebody to put in a little breakout room where they can hear from you and, and pray for you privately, confidentially. Um, and then finally, um, we, we have heard from people who are really going through difficult situations financially, and uh, that's really given us an opportunity to, to try to meet those needs through the benevolence uh, funds that we have. And um, well, before I get into funds, I think I'll just turn it over to Karen at this point, and you can take over about uh, financial picture that where we're at now. Okay. Yeah, so I just want to give um, just some summary 
overview before we get to some of the details that we want to share with you. I just want to share some summary thoughts about kind of where we're at as a church financially. Um, and first of all, I just want to share some good news um, that we're right on track um, with our budget up through April of 2020, um, exactly where we would expect to be in um, more of a normal year. So praise God for um, his provision of our church and of our body, and thank you for your faithfulness and your giving. Um, I, it's been such a um, privilege and a blessing to just watch the faithfulness of God's people in this really practical way. Um, so um, I, I also want to say that the numbers that we've looked at that I'm going to show you are six weeks into this um, situation that we're in. And I think as we all are aware, everything is changing rapidly. So that's the story today. And um, as we all know, we don't know what the story is tomorrow financially in the future. Um, that doesn't minimize or take away our trust in God's provision. Um, but at the same time, uh, your elders are very faithfully looking at the finances every week um, and just being excellent stewards of, um, of, of, God's, of God's provision to this body. So um, I, I also want to assure you we will be faithful and consistent in our communication with you about this aspect of our church life. Um, so those are sort of the high level um, um, thoughts about the finances. And I have a couple of slides to show you just to give you a little more detail. Um, so the first slide just um, shows, this, this should look somewhat familiar to you if you've been a part of our business meeting. Um, but if you look at that far right column, that is our annual 2020 approved budget. And that first line on the far right side is the $2.8 million expected giving uh, for 2020. Um, and as you can see, the amount that we've received to date through the end of April is almost $850,000, which is right around a third of our annual budget. So again, we're right on track um, with where we should be in the year. Um, and then also, just as a side note, um, our giving from January through April of 2020 has actually been higher than our giving um, from January through April of 2019. So if we're going to compare last year to this year, we're actually a little bit ahead even um, from where we were last year at this time. Um, Continuing down that sheet, when you look at our commitments, those are our budgeted expenses. So in section one is our kind of our community church ministry staff, internal ministry costs, general operating expenses, um, utilities, things like that. Um, and overall, we've again we've spent about a third of our annual budget, 30%. Um, and additionally, um, we anticipate those internal ministry costs and the general church operating costs to decrease um, as we go into the coming months because we are just spending less of our budgeted, anticipated budgeted amount on regular church life things like the retreat and Easter and youth camps and so on and so forth. Um, the section number two, missions, spreading the love of Christ. Um, you'll see that we've already um, given 50% of our annual 2020 budget um, to our missions commitments. Um, and we have a very strong commitment to ensure that that line item is met through the end of 2020. Um, and then the last um, detail in the commitment section is the building and property um, line item. And you'll see there we've um, spent about 12% towards that. Um, and also, just as a reminder, in our annual budget, we have a line item where we put away $150,000 towards our building of property each year. And assuming our budget is maintained and the giving continues, we will still do that, but we won't make that decision to move that money to the property account until the end of the year, where we, where we can ensure that the ministry commitments and the missions commitments are able to be met. Um, 
And then, as Mike mentioned, um, below the total commitments line is the amount of money that we have given away through our benevolence giving. Um, and as a reminder, we do have money set aside um, that the elders oversee. Um, and we rely on information that we receive from just connections we have within our church, through small groups, home groups, gathering groups. Um, and those needs filter into the elders and we're able to disperse money to those who have particular need within our body. And so that is um, the amount that you see there. So um, the next slide just shows all of this information in picture form. The blue line is our annual budget. The green, the green line is what has been spent to date. Um, and as a reminder, as you're, you know, as I'm talking about this and you're looking at that, this webinar is recorded. So if you want to have a closer look at any of these graphs, you'll be able to access this at a later time as well. Um, and then the last slide is just some detail about all of the places that we have given our um, mission giving through April of 2020. So this is just a quick snapshot. Um, again, we don't have a lot, we don't have time to go through all of these, but as you can briefly see, um, we have a great privilege to partner with all of these amazing organizations and individuals um, in town and across the world. Um, so I think that's it for the finances. <clears throat> Benji? So now we get to talk about the thing that brought you here to this town hall this evening, the idea of um, reopening and what it may look like for us to pursue returning to corporate worship in some form. And I am really excited about that idea. I'm excited about the idea of being together again. As Mike mentioned, I, I long to be um, seeing each of you on a Sunday and together again. And yet, as we all know, that is a complicated endeavor with a lot of complexity attached to it. And so I wanna tell you a little bit about where we are in our process of thinking about that and moving towards that. And also want to um, tell you a little bit of what we hope will guide us as we make our decisions going forward. But before we do that, I want to just build on something that Mike already mentioned. And that is the fact that though we are not currently gathering for corporate worship, the church is in no way closed. We believe that the church is not, in fact, the building, but it is the people. And we have said that for four decades now, that the church is this people. And I am really proud of our church and the way that our church has continued to be the church, even in this season when we can't actually gather together for corporate worship as we are used to. And so as we think about that, I want to just acknowledge that there are some wide spectrums of thought on reopening. We have heard from many who have concerns about what it will look like to safely regather. We've also heard from some who say that this thing is somewhat overblown and we should perhaps be gathering already. We want to acknowledge that there is a wide spectrum of thinking and we want to call each other again in this season to be the church, a church that is unified under Christ, a church that is willing to learn from those who have different perspectives than you might, a church that is willing to treat one another with brotherly and sisterly kindness, even um, when you encounter something you might not wholeheartedly agree with. There is a spectrum of thinking, but what we do all agree on is that we're all eager to be together again in some form when it makes sense and is safe to do that. And so I want to tell you that I'm really excited about our reopening task force, this group of men and women that we have brought together to help us think through what it might take to move us back towards gathering for corporate worship. This is a group of people who have been a part of our church for um, some for a very long time, and I'm really excited about the expertise they're bringing. And so the reopening task force currently consists of Todd Fearer, who is bringing medical expertise and insights to that group, Tony Davis, who is helping us to think through the legal side of things. Aaron Marshall, who in his role as COO at the Santa Barbara Zoo is helping to think this through for that organization as well. Donna Sudano, who is thinking already and has been learning a lot about the different opportunities for children's ministry and what that may look like. Karen McLean, who is helping us think through a lot of 
just big picture organizationally. And then I am the, um, I'm the lame duck on that group. I, they let me hang out with them, which is great. Um, and so I'm really excited about the collective wisdom of that group. We've already had um, our first initial meeting and really great stuff came out of that. So I want you to know that if you should have questions, you could reach out to one of the six of us. We'd be happy to let you know kind of where we're at in the stages of our thinking. But no church that you are in really good hands as, as we are trying to gain wisdom and insight from these different um, community leaders in their spheres of influence that we then can bring back to the elders as we consider what that may look like. One of the keys for us though is to be people who are leading out of principle, not out of reaction. We are working really hard to think through and even articulate what are the guiding principles by which we will make these decisions. Things such as we want to live in a way that shows respect for our government authorities. Also, we want to be the community that Jesus has called us to be. We want to make decisions out of love for not only our current members and how much we love to be together, but our non-members and our future members in the community. And with those kinds of principles and others, we hope to come up with some really good thoughts on what reopening could look like. I want to just help set your expectations now. It is very likely that we will have a phased approach to reopening. As we anticipate the restrictions being lifted incrementally, we will be able to entertain different ideas and different aspects of what it looks like to be back together. So I know many of us have been asking, when can we get back to normal? I think the better question for this season may be, how are we going to pursue our mission even as the situation changes? How are we as a church going to pursue our mission even as the situation changes, guided by our principles and our commitments and our desire that is held by everyone to be together. And so I, I want to tell you, church, we, we think that um, we are going to have some, some things coming on the, hopefully the near horizon that will be communicated to you. I want to encourage you, if you don't already get the updates through the app or check your email, we promise to be in really good and ongoing communication with you as we think about the different phases of what reopening may look like. I do wanna let you know that there's a variety of options on the table. Many of them came in the form of your questions. Thank you for them. We're gonna talk about those in just a moment. We are considering all manner of things in our desire to be together in a form that is safe and sensible and will allow us to be the community God has called us to be together. And so um, look for more updates to come from the reopening task force and we look forward to getting those to you. All right, it's time for some questions and responses to that. And uh, should we just start with the ones that we we heard from this week? Again, thanks for thanks for getting that stuff to us. Um, one of the questions we got was, have you thought about doing live stream uh, rather than pre-recorded stuff? Um, and this person mentioned the, the benefits of uh, meeting at a specific time where we're all doing uh, meeting for worship at the same time, even if we're not in the same place. And uh, the answer is yes, we will be considering that. Um, you know, for the early part of this pandemic, uh, when we couldn't get people in the same uh, location for things like leading worship and so forth, um, just pre-recording made more sense for us. Um, and probably still will for the next few weeks at least. Um, but as restrictions are get relaxed for small groups being in the same place, uh, this, we, we may, may not have the same kind of obstacles for that as we did before. So anyway, there are other difficulties with live stream. Uh, there are some difficulties for pre-recording and so forth. So uh, we're thinking about it. We'll just have to weigh that as it comes up. Um, Another question that got asked was, um, what happened to the three crosses that used to sit outside uh, on Siena Gitas Road? If you've come up for a home group or something, you may or may not have noticed those crosses are gone. And uh, the short answer is um, termites, atheist termites have eaten <laughs> those crosses and cor corroded them away. The worst kind. Uh, yeah, the worst kind. Uh, so one was so bad, uh, I guess Ben Ewart was putting a tape measure up on top of one and it, it almost fell over by the tape measure. So um, anyway, they are currently 
been taken down. We're working on them and trying to get quotes for what it would cost to, to fix them. Um, and there was a whole uh, bunch of questions, a whole bunch, I'm talking maybe five questions that, that dealt with um, things about the reopening, have we thought of? So have we thought about um, getting FM transmitters and using those uh, so that we could spread out around the campus? Have we thought about using multiple places on campus to gather on Sundays? Uh, might we consider a hybrid of uh, some online and some in-person services at the same time? Uh, have we thought about different formats of service, either shorter times or uh, less singing or meeting outdoors or, you know, questions about masks, uh, would we wear those? And the answer to all those is yes, 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 we will be considering all of the above and more. Um, again, this is not the type of thing where uh, we're going to wake up one day soon and we're just going to say, all right, church is back to normal. Uh, we're going to as Benji talked about this task force, they're going to be considering all kinds of different options and seeing what makes sense to do uh, to open up at the right time in the right way. So some of the specific questions about ministry programming, for example, have come in about kids ministry and, and what is that going to look like? And, and we want you to know that our approach to children's ministry probably will not look the same as it did in February for a while. And so our return to kids ministry as um, you have become accustomed to it, it may, be, it may be a little ways off and that'll be part of the reopening task force thinking through the different ways and the different approaches to ministry even when we are able to come back together at various size groups. One of the other ministries obviously that is on a lot of people's hearts and minds is the ministry of home groups. And I have told multiple people that I, I think for our church in particular once we get to the point where we can gather home groups safely, even socially distanced, that will make a tremendous difference for our church community as we seek to be the church together. And so we are going to consider any number of options for making home groups a reality as soon as, again, it is possible safely and um, even under the under the desire to honor our government authorities. And we long to get back to that space where we're learning together, worshiping together, maybe even um, getting to see each other physically and not just over Zoom. So we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I was gonna say when, and I don't know if we said this at the beginning, but if you have a question that you wanna submit now, at the bottom of your screen, you should see a little box that says Q&A. You can just click that and type in a question that you might have. Um, again, if we're able to answer it here, we will. If not, um, we can get back to you individually as well. Um, but one of the questions that came in that we've heard um, from various people over the last several weeks is um, some people wondering if they have a desire to support Santa Barbara Community Church financially and some of our members who are hurting you know, in particular financially, is there a special fund? Um, and I would say, yes, we have a special fund, and that is what I talked about before. The elders administer money out of a fund that we, um, you know, through our, through our savings or excess giving, we have funded. So, um, so all that to say, your regular giving mm -hmm. continues to support funds like that. Um, and that's what I would encourage you to continue to do. The elders are monitoring these requests and these funds very carefully and have the ability to move some of our savings, so to speak, or our excess giving or over-budgeted money into those funds. So um, again, just another opportunity to thank you for your faithfulness and um, giving. What other questions? I see the number going up on the Q and A. Um, yeah, there's a question about communion. Um, we've been missing communion. Any way to do it remotely, as other churches do? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how many of you have seen under uh, on the church website. There is a uh, under worship. We did post something that talked about celebrating the Lord's Supper um, from home. Um, so if you go on the on that tab and look under there you'll see some suggestions uh there um now i realize that 
we haven't done anything where we're all remotely doing it, uh, giving instructions from the front. And that, again, may be something that we consider. It, this is a tricky one, though. I even theologically, I think through uh, that the Lord's Supper uh, helps remind us of, of the incarnate form uh, of Christ and also the incarnate uh, nature of the church itself. And so, um, Anyway, we'll, we'll need to give some more thought. I'm glad other people are missing that as much as I am. You know, Mike, that causes me to piggyback on that question a little bit that leads me to think about the boxes of supplies that we have in our office right now, um, which include individual self-serve communion cups and wafers for when we have the opportunity to at least have some groups together. Um, and just so you all know, we are utilizing this time to walk our campus, to look at our bathrooms and reorder, you know, touchless um, soap dispensers and paper towel holders. So we're, we're, we're really also thinking through real practical implications of us being on campus together in a safe way. Um, there's several questions coming in about ideas that whether or not we've thought about you know, small gatherings with youth group or small groups and um, with socially distanced people. And I want to agree with Benji, yes, we have started to talk about that. We've started to think about that. Our staff is beginning, you know, to think creatively when we feel we have clear um, um, guidelines from our authorities. Um, we are very much looking forward to our small group meetings. And one of the things that we've been talking about is how grateful we are that our church 40 years ago was founded on small groups. And that is going to be the heartbeat and the life beat, we think, as we get to meet together in person. So yes, small groups, youth group small groups. Yes, home groups. Yes, women's gathering groups um, together in person. So, um, so there's several questions about the practicality of that. And we're starting to see that already. I was just out on the lawn a little while ago, and there's a home group. They may not still be meeting, but they were. And some of this we're going to leave in the hands of of you, uh, the church and the home group leaders and so forth, to get a sense and the youth group leaders to touch in with those families and see when when those people are comfortable about it, with it, and not just, you know, when when guidelines are given. You know, that it raises a question of, uh, are we simply waiting for permission to meet from government? Or um, the reality is, it's even more complex than that. You know, if we got word uh, tomorrow that said we could open up church campus and have have our gatherings again, we might not be ready to meet in the same way that we were. We have to think through and strategize uh, for, you know, how we're prepared for having children's ministry at what level and what scope. The same is true. Uh, in a smaller scale in terms of our small groups, those groups are going to have to think and prepare and, and uh, just consider together where, where their comfort level is and meeting together. And so um, I think there's a, there's a balance there of wanting to uh, respect and receive guidelines, but also to, to live into that practically, you got to take a lot of wisdom. A couple more questions about reopening. Um, one about are we collaborating at all with other um, local churches and pastors about what they're doing? And um, I would say yes. Um, and do you want to talk to that a little bit? Yeah, really early in this pandemic, um, we were connecting really regularly with other churches as they were making their shutdown decisions. And now as we move towards reopening, um, we expect to do the same exact thing and try to benefit from the wisdom of others in our community around decisions they're making. One of the things I will say, again, by way of helping to set expectations, um, we are one of the larger churches in town, and it's entirely possible that um, if your neighbor is not a part of our church and they're part of a smaller church, they might be returning to corporate worship in a form that looks more normal before we are able to do so and because of just sheer size. And so I just want to let us know that we really want to learn from others um, and recognize that others are in different situations sometimes that are beneficial towards their reopening before us or or not but we um, are committed to learning from others i'm really grateful for the really wise men and women that lead churches here in this town that i 
um, have been fortunate to connect with and, and learn from in the early days, and we will continue to do that as we think about what reopening looks like. Yeah, there's a couple more questions. Like, you know, will the task force be sharing um, sharing our you know things we're thinking about, modifications and things like that? And I just want to re reiterate, yes, we are so committed to regular and clear and um, open communication. And I'm guessing that since most of you are on this webinar, webinar right now, you have been aware of our communication um, protocol, but just to kind of explain that, just so you know, every Monday, most Wednesdays and every Saturday, you should expect to hear from us. Um, Saturdays are always the worship um, service for Sunday. Wednesday is typically a pastoral message or something that you really need to be aware of, um, typically from Wednesday and Mike. And then Mondays is sort of our, I consider it your announcement sheet when you're in church, like kind of a bulletin board. And these are all the things that for you to be aware of. So I would just strongly encourage you um, to make sure you keep an eye out for those Monday, Wednesday, Saturday communications. Um, we want to be sensitive to not overwhelming everybody with communication. We've thought and talked a lot about that, um, but we want to be really open and clear. So, and again, like Mike said before, please let us know um, of ways we can do that better. We really are open to your feedback. Yeah. Um, there's several questions here about how we can be praying for our pastors and staff. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. thank you all. <laughs> yeah. I. I would say one of the the main ways you can be praying for the your pastors, your elders, your staff is for stamina and wisdom. This is a this has been a taxing season of feeling as though we are revisiting everything all of the time. And as Mike mentioned, this situation changes so rapidly that at times it feels like decisions we make one week. A week later, a week later, need to be revisited and reassessed, and that's uh, that's draining. And so you can be praying for stamina, for lots of wisdom, and I think that those those two gifts, I know at least in my life, <laughs> would be um, a huge benefit. Agreed. Yeah. Um, um, there's some there's some specific questions here related to specific ministry specific like youth group high school children's ministry, um, and I think what I'm going to do is um, ensure that all of these specific questions re related to certain ministries get passed off to our staff in those areas because they will be better equipped to answer specifically some of these specific questions. So. Um, you can be assured that they will get to the right people and you'll, you will hear from them. Take the opportunity in this break in the action to wish happy birthday to Tony Davis <laughs> and Eliana Arnold. There we go. Hey, how about that? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Get them all, knock them I, I all out. I think we've generally ans answered most of them. If we haven't, we will be sure to go through them and answer you either directly or pass them off to a staff member that has a better answer than one of the three of us. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, I, I just want to say um, thank you for joining us. There's any number of shows you could have been binging right now. <laughs> and um, the fact that you are here um, is just a demonstration of your love for this church, your investment in this church, and um, want you to know that we love you. We are really excited to, um, to move towards a different version of church life that doesn't involve um, the mediating screen. And um, so thank you for being with us. Thanks for your questions. They've greatly benefited us this evening. Um, yeah, I'll close this in prayer. And uh, again, thanks for joining. I see there's more questions coming in, but we're going to call it an evening and uh, we'll try to get back to those questions in a different format. But uh, Lord, thank you for your church that you love. You purchased it with your own blood. And we want to just ask for your blessing on Santa Barbara Community Church and these 
strange days, would you continue to lead us and guide us, give us wisdom and uh, great love for, for one another in the world that you care for so much? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to pray that you would continue to lead us in, in mission and uh, help us to be your disciples. Help us to, um, in all of the, the draining situations that we deal with, to, to continue to put energy towards prayer, uh, towards loving people towards seeking your face. God, we love you. And uh, again, we're, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us, everybody. Love Have a great you. night. Miss you. <laughs>